Built different. BBM Game Day after the Madness 2020. Presented by Papa John's. And sponsored by Central Bank. Coca-Cola. Don Franklin Auto. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. Kroger. Shelter Insurance. And UK Healthcare. Madness. UK basketball thrives on it. Feeds off it. Celebrates it. From the wild excitement of opening night to the highest expectations come tournament time. But 2020 has taken madness to new maddening heights. In a season of uncertainty, this program understands the one thing that could make all the difference. If you want to hang a banner, you need to be built different. Built different. BBN Game Day after the Madness 2020. Presented by Papa John's. Welcome to the special one hour edition of BBN Game Day. I'm Mary Jo Perino. And I'm Keith Farmer. On this episode, we'll wrap up this weekend of a most unusual version of Big Blue Madness. We're going to take a look at the schedules for Kentucky men's and women's basketball, hear from the coaches, players, and bring in a host of analysts. One of them is Christy Thomas with the UK Sports Network. Hey, Christy. Hey, guys. Happy to be talking basketball. <laughs> Yes, very much so. Let's open up with the discussion now to our full panel, and that includes uh, Christy and Jack Gibbons and Mike Pratt of the UK Sports Network. Welcome in, everyone. Hello. Hello. It's very Brady Bunch here. I love it. Um, Social distancing at its finest. First, let's talk about this schedule, guys. Cal has talked about it. It could be one of the most challenging non-conference schedules in the country. Well, I think I think he's right. I think Goose would agree that it's always good to be challenged early before you get into league play. Um, now, if COVID doesn't strike, that's a very exciting uh, non-conference. UCLA going to be very good. Kansas going to be very good. U of L, you don't know they've had some injuries, but that's a rivalry game. And then, Jack, the league is really tough this year. Uh, you know what? Nationally, the league hasn't gotten its proper due, I don't think. But we know from experience what it's like going into places like even Mississippi, Mississippi State. Of course, LSU will be ready. So the conference is going to be really tough. It's good to see some names uh, on the schedule that we don't see very often. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Mike, you named some that are going to be uh, all that Kentucky can deal with. That's for sure. Christy, they kind of mentioned it. I mean, uh, SEC schedule. Kentucky is not the pick to win the league this year. It's Tennessee. It is Tennessee, but I think you saw this coming a little bit over the last couple of years. Tennessee has been building something here. Um, so, but I think that's fuel for the fire. I think that this is one of those situations where Kentucky has ruled the SEC for a long, long time. And I think that these guys are smart enough to really take that as motivation. Guys, just talk a little bit about who you think might be. Let's start with you, Jack. Who do you think is the player that really is going to be key to this season for the Wildcats? Well, I'm, I'm hoping it's Brooks. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because he is the one guy who has experience with Calipari's system. And if he comes in, adjusts well, I know he's had some nagging injuries. Hopefully he'll be over all of that. But if he comes in and plays well, and does what I think he will do. And we saw flashes of it last year. So if he comes in and does what I think he's going to do and, and be a leader for all these new guys, I think that's going to be a real key for this team. Mike, I want to go back to the schedule for a second because you brought it up. UCLA, Louisville, <laughs> Kansas, Texas. Early on in the season, Cal's teams have sometimes, you know, suffered some losses in those tough games because they're trying to figure everything out. Is there a time that you panic early on or don't panic early on, depending how those um, early non-conference matchups go? Well, coaches and players can't, can't panic. Uh, Big Blue Nation may panic, but coaches and players can't. And there's a team on that schedule that Kentucky meets early that we left off, and I have been researching them. That's the Richmond Spiders, a team yeah. last year that was headed to the NCAA. Finished second in their league behind Dayton, who I thought was a Final Four team. They have like six of their seven first-line players back, and we get them on Sunday, Thanksgiving weekend Sunday. That'll be a heck of a challenge. 
uh, for Kentucky that early in the season. Then going forward, there's plenty of challenges there. No reason to panic early. There's an adjustment period. How long that adjustment period goes really depends on how quick the players pick it up individually and collectively. You know, Jack, in this strange year, we don't get exhibition games and we don't get those secret behind the scenes games that, that sometimes they'll play. Uh, Kentucky's going to have to come out ready to go in that first game, uh, you know, first few games actually, that's going to take place at Rupp without seeing another team. Yeah, and even with the negatives of not having the pregame uh, kind of uh, Transylvania type games uh, that they have every year, I think that's going to be a negative. But the good thing is they are going to be so excited about playing someone other than themselves. Um, I look for them to come out in those games, especially early, with a lot of energy. Uh, they're going to try to figure each other out, and we understand that. But uh, it's, it's going to make it just a little bit tougher uh, than usual. But there's an excitement that comes with that as well. And I'm looking, at, looking forward to seeing that excitement that you know you're going to get at the start of the season. Well, that's certainly different, no doubt about that. But what else is going to be different are the fans and the lack of fans that will be at Rep Arena. So uh, I'd like to hear from each of you about how you think that will impact the season for these guys. Um, you know, you'd like to think that they're mature enough and smart enough to be able to play through things like that, but it certainly changes the dynamic. It, it really does. And where I think it really changes it, as Jack was talking about playing teams early, getting your feet on the ground. If you need a boost early, say you're kind of flat against a Moorhead or Detroit because you have read about them and you don't respect them like you do Richmond, so you, you don't really bring your A game to start and you're kind of struggling to get confidence and get momentum, that's when a crowd can lift you up at that point, and particularly early in the season. So I think that's something uh, that all teams are going to have to deal with this year, a lack of a crowd at certain times in the game to kind of jump start them. And, and the one thing that I'm, and I know I'm thinking ahead when I say this, but the one thing that uh, makes Kentucky basketball, Kentucky basketball is having the opportunity to play in front of the fans. I mean, this is big time basketball for, so for a guy like uh, Sar, for instance, who might just be here one year, um, I, I'm going to really feel bad that they don't get to experience having Rupp Arena uh, full to the rafters and the crowd involved in the game. And in some of these tough games, and I'm thinking ahead again to that Tennessee game uh, when they come to Lexington, to not know that experience is going to be very difficult. And what I hope it does, uh, it drives a lot of these guys to come back for another year. I mean, we haven't heard a lot about one and done because we don't know if we're going to have one game and done. But I, I hope somehow these guys get to experience what it's like to play a game in a full rough arena. I agree, Jack. At least, you know, I'm going to have a cardboard cutout of my face <laughs> at Rupp. That should help. Something. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Coming up next on this BBN Game Day special, our group discussion continues. We'll turn our attention to the talented group of guards that you'll hopefully get to see in action very soon. More mead ounces means more mead bounces. Get any papadilla like the new double cheeseburger papadilla for just six bucks. Papa John's. For over 50 years, Don Franklin has been serving Kentucky with the convenience of 24 locations and over 5,000 vehicles to choose from. Now we're making it even easier with the Franklin Fast Pass. Find a vehicle, click on the Franklin Fast Pass, and start building your deal your way. Choose your payment, value your trade, and get approved, all within the comforts of, well, wherever you are. You can then either come to your Don Franklin dealership, or we can deliver the vehicle to you. Franklin Fast Pass. Fast, easy, no obligation. Conveniently located at DonFranklinAuto.com. If you thought you saw the last of double cheeseburger pizza, Think again, because it's back at Papa John's again. Get a large double cheeseburger pizza for just 12 bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. You're watching Build Different, BBN Game Day after the Madness 2020. Presented by Papa John's. Got a little nene, little, uh, yeah. and then you got a little bow, you got a uh, something like that, and that's about it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I like doing this 
something like that. I don't know. I don't really have a lot of space right here, but y'all see it when it come. I'm, I'm gonna get into it. Some moves. I really don't got no moves. I, I got a few moves. I throw it up and then I whoa. That's that's really it. But make no mistake about it. These guys have been working on these moves. <laughs> They've been coming up with something for a while. So welcome back into our hour long edition of BBN Game Day. We'll see if they can dance. I don't know. Uh, but let's get back to our panel and guys. Let's talk a little bit about these guards. Um, and let's get started first of all um, with Brandon Boston. So much hype around this kid. What are you seeing out of him that you like so much? Well, what I've watched on some uh, tape that I was sent from uh, Tim Asher up in Lexington, kid is uh, very, uh, very athletic, and he seems to know how to play. He seems to know how to get his shot. I think he's got a well-rounded game. I think he can knock down the tray. He's good off the bounce, and he seems to, in what I've seen, uh, finish at the rim. So he's got all three levels of scoring pretty much within his capabilities. I, I like the looks of him. I, I like the looks of Clark, long, lean player who can get paint touches whenever he wants. I like that a lot. I uh, question sometimes, um, well, people question his outside shooting. We'll see. But, you know, a guy that might be critical, Askew is a good young point guard. He's out of high school early. But the guy that might make a difference, Goose and everybody, is Mintz from Creighton, the transfer. You know, he can shoot the ball. He's got a lot of experience. He might be a guy that you could put in there at the point to start the season, give Askew a little bit more time to grow into his game. And Mintz is, uh, is a guy I think is going to be really important. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned Mintz, and that's exactly what I was going to say with the youth coming in. And that probably shows as much at the point guard spot than any other position on the floor. Uh, it's always tough bringing these young guys in and expect them, number one, to learn how to play point guard or to be able to play, but number two, to learn to do it the way Calipari likes to do it So for the point guard. So it's going to be tough, but as I look at that backcourt as a whole, and I know we talk about this a lot, but you see a lot of interchangeable parts, and even that spills over into the small forward position, these guys could step into the backcourt as well. So I'm going to like some of the combinations Coach Cal can put on the floor. I'm going to like seeing what they're able to do defensively against some of the guards they're going to be kind of matched up against. All right, so let's talk about the Kentucky and the Mr. Basketball and Dante Allen. He had a year here, yeah. obviously didn't get to play, but everybody that goes in and watches him says he has a pure shot. I don't know how it will be on the defensive end, but they say he's a heck of a shooter. Well, um, we'll worry about defense when uh, Coach Calipari tells him he's got to worry about defense. <laughs> right now, his, his, his biggest asset might be shooting the basketball. And uh, Mike, you just mentioned that that's going to be the question mark uh, for this team this year, whether or not, um, and I don't know that it's really a, a case of whether or not as much as it is when these guys start making consistent shots from the outside. Dante will have a spot there if he's able to do it. I agree. He's uh, he's a guy that uh, would be kind of like a wild card goose. Is that everything else doesn't quite work out for Kentucky at the wing with perimeter shooting, but they can call on Dante Allen, who's shown he can shoot the ball. And what he's got to be careful with is not to lose his confidence. If he doesn't get off to a great start, uh, maybe struggling with his jump shot or maybe struggling with the defense. He's got to remember, do what you do best. Get yourself <laughs> open, shoot the ball. Everything else will come and fall in place. The way Cal likes to play is fast up and down the court. And this year he said, maybe because of all the guys I've got, we don't even have to go by positions, right? Positionless basketball is definitely a thing now in college and certainly beyond in the pros. These guards as a combination, how fast are they? Will they be able to lead the charge that Cal kind of wants to see? Well, from what I've seen tape-wise, guys, he got plenty of speed. This is going to be a very fast team. But, you know, it, it, to, to play fast all the time, you've got to come with some stops. You've got to come with some rebounds. That triggers your break. So it all boils down to uh, the pressure that Kentucky can put on the ball and then rebounding, and away you go. There's a lot of guys that can handle the ball. Doesn't just have to be the point guard. Yes, you would like that, but a lot of guys can handle it. That puts pressure on your opponent to bring quickly back 
their entire team to defend. Yeah, and, and handling the basketball uh, is only a, a small part of it if you're running fast breaks and if you're running them properly because there's not a whole lot of dribbling in a fast break. It's passing the basketball. It's getting open on the wing. It's, uh, it's finishing at the hole, which you mentioned. Uh, but it all starts with defense, and it all starts with rebounding the basketball. And if I am on the wing and I have confidence that my big guys are going to get me the basketball. That's going to allow me to, uh, and I'm going to whisper this, cheat just a little bit out on the break. And it's going to give us some uh, some offense in the transition game. That's going to make Kentucky basketball very much fun this year. It's good stuff. I'm loving this conversation. Still ahead on our 2020 After the Madness special, we'll turn our attention to Kentucky's big men. Yeah, and there's plenty to break down with this talented group of forwards. Don't go away. At UK Healthcare, we're dedicated to one mission, helping Kentucky get healthier. It's what drives our research, our outreach, our expert care. It's why we come to work every day and why Kentuckians come to us when it matters most. And it's why we've been ranked Kentucky's number one hospital for the fifth year in a row with one of the top cancer centers in the nation. The best in Kentucky, the best for Kentucky. UK Healthcare, the power of advanced medicine. Love getting prices that are lower than low on food that's fresher than fresh? With the Kroger app, you can get personalized coupons on top of weekly sales and rewards like fuel points, all for prices that are lower than the everyday low. So go ahead, get lower than low. Kroger, fresh for everyone. You're watching Build Different, BBN Game Day after the Madness 2020, presented by Papa John's. What should the BBN call you? Is it Cam? Is it Cam Ron? What do you want to be called? Fletch. C. Fletch. Fletch. C. Fletch. I would say Brand is my off-court name, BJ will be my on-court name. That's okay. how I see it. Like an alter ego. Definitely. Welcome back to this special hour-long edition of BBN Game Day. I bet Cameron Fletcher doesn't even know Chevy Chase as Fletch. I know. I right? Fletch. But that's all I could think about when he said that. Uh, let's jump into this group of forwards um, with our guys, Mike Pratt and Jack Givens. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about Keon Brooks. He's the lone, he's the 6% of the returning scoring mm -hmm. on this team. I want to ask you if he's going to maybe try to bring his game outside a little bit, as we saw with the likes of Patrick Patterson and P.J. Washington, to really springboard them to that next level of player. Mary Jo, I think he will, and I think he will because of this. Saar could really play in the paint, not necessarily with his back to the basket, but he can really play in the paint and, and goes to the elbow, got a nice shot. He, he has a good, does a good job of uh, drawing fouls. That's going to open things up for a lot of people on the perimeter to include Keon Brooks. So uh, of all these big guys, and, and Cal's got some height and length that he could put a big team out there, particularly if he wants to play his zone, he could really stretch that floor, and cover a lot of people with that height and length. But Keon, he's a bright kid. He really understands his role, it seems like this year and what I'm reading. Um, he's gonna be able to find a way to score some baskets. How many points? I don't know. I think that the, the, the the guy that's the key to the big guys is Saar. I mean, you talk about returning mm -hmm. players. Folks, he averaged 14 a game and nine rebounds in the ACC. Pretty good league, not necessarily better than, than ours. What we've got is a returning player in essence. We talk about just Keon. Well, this young fella, 14 and nine in a couple blocks, that's a pretty good start for a returning player. I, I think he's the guy that everything will flow through uh, in and around the paint. And and I'll follow up on the Keon Brooks question. Um, uh, that is a natural progression progression for Brooks. Um, he's proven he can be effective around the basket. I think stepping out to that 15 to 18 foot range now is going to be a big part of, uh, of of the growth in his game. Another reason I think that is because of these guards we just talked about and their uh, their ability to break people down off the dribble and get to the hole, the perimeter is going to be wide open for shooting the basketball. 
But I, I do like the fact that Sar has had some experience against some big guys in the ACC. He's another smart guy. I mean, he has proven his game has adjusted every year. Now, if they can put just a little bit more weight on his body, uh, which I think they will, get him a little bit stronger, I think that's going to be a big difference that we'll see in his game this year. I mean, Goose, what do you know about 15 to 18 footers? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and I, I, I made I made one and two, but I tell you the reason why <laughs> is because we had Rick Roby and Mike Phillips inside taking up the paint, so I had to learn something else. <laughs> it's a lost art, man. I'm telling you, that 15 footer is a lost art. I think it's funny too, yes, though. Mike, Mike thinks that they're going to run that Joby Hall one three one, right? That's that's what you're thinking. Uh, I'd love to see it happen, but I don't he know about it this year. Zone. He did say zone, didn't he? <laughs> he did say zone. Yeah. He said it. So so let me ask yeah. you about this. We talk about everybody comes to see Clark and Boston, and then when they leave from a practice, they say Isaiah Jackson, and they talk about him. Well, look, guys and gals. He's got a lot of tall, long guys, okay? Tall, long guys. And it could be a good combination of a lot of people. Right now, a couple of them are behind the curve. Uh, Isaiah Jackson's a guy that's ahead of the curve. They're very happy with how he's playing now versus what they expected. But that doesn't mean the other fellas that are a little behind won't be contributors. This topping kid has got some live legs. His brother did. He played at Dayton. Okay, he's a slender guy, but... He's got live legs, so there's there's just an awful lot of Fletcher and, and where there's an awful lot of talent in there. It depends on whether they can elevate their talent through the first weeks and months of the season to where Cal feels comfortable playing a mixture of these big guys. And when he feels comfortable of that, I think you got a ball club. Defense and rebounding early on. It's going to be the driver to how many minutes you get. I mean, it's not going to be focused around offense for these big guys. But if you can block me a shot or two a game, and if you can get five or six rebounds, you're going to get plenty of minutes. That's something that Cal has talked an, off, talked an awful lot about is uh, defense. But that, these guys, I think, are very mature. They've talked an awful lot about wanting to be an elite defensive team. And I think, to your point, Mike, it starts in the middle with these guys being able to block shots and be an elite rebounder, a two-handed rebounder, which we've heard Cal say you absolutely have to do. He doesn't want to need this one-handed stuff. And these guys have that ability, Mike. They do. And, and do you think Cal really is bothered by the one-handed rebounder? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. it. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, you're right, Christy. He's he's driving that one home. Um, I, I just think that big guys typically, unless you're AD or, or maybe Patrick Patterson we've seen, or uh, um, because a lot of these guys come late. Uh, Nick came late. He, he developed. How about Bam? How about Bam's development? Once Bam figured it out late in the season, Boy, he became a, a third scorer on the team. He always blocked shots and rebounding. Now, one thing I think Jack and I would agree on, you can only block so many shots. When the defender moves over to block that shot, that opens up the guy that he was guarding. And once that team sees that happening, the move over to block the shot, they're going to dish it to the open man. So the premium starts on being able, more times than not, to keep the ball out of the paint. Stay between your man and the basket. Right, Goose? Well, you know, the driver for these guys all throughout their uh, high school and AAU career seems to be based on how many points you score. It, it takes some time on this level to learn and to trust that your coaching staff is telling you that rebounding and defense is what gets you minutes. It takes time for these guys to pick that up. Um, and particularly, you know, the bigs are not usually as smart as some of the other positions on the floor. Uh, the guards, they kind of pick it up. That's that's just a basketball joke that Mike and I both know. But defense and rebounding is what's going to be the driver for points. Listen, guys, I don't know if you know, Anthony Davis had the fifth most shots on the team. And that's he right. turned out okay. What? <laughs> still to come and I on this... think the fourth most point. <laughs> yes. Uh, still to come on this special edition of BBN Game Day, we're going to hear from all of these players ourselves. We're yeah, going to learn a little bit more about who they are off the basketball court. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today tastes like staying in, like our go-to place. <laughs> tastes like anticipating, and a little bit like waiting. Food's here. Today tastes.
tastes like a piece of the action. And it never tasted this good. <laughs> How do you measure success? In points? In wins? Or trophies? At Shelter Insurance, we measure success in the quality of our products and services, in how we support our communities, in being there when you need us most. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Madness. UK basketball thrives on it, feeds off it, celebrates it. From the wild excitement of opening night to the highest expectations come tournament time. But 2020 has taken madness to new maddening heights. In a season of uncertainty, this program understands the one thing that could make all the difference. If you want to hang a banner, you need to be built different. Built different. BBN Game Day after the Madness 2020. Presented by Papa John's. What should the BBN know about Terrence Clark off the basketball court? Uh, I think I got a great spirit. Uh, I just love the smile, as you can see. You know, everything is kind of just, you know, I just go with the flow. I love having fun. Uh, off the court, I feel like anybody can come up to me and have a conversation with me. And, you know, like I said, I'm upbeat. I love smiling and talking to people, so I'm very outgoing. A lot of outgoing uh, players on the team this year. Welcome back to this special one-hour edition of BBN Game Day. I'm Keith Farmer. And I'm Christy Thomas. That was Terrence Clark, who I, I'm thinking is very quickly becoming my favorite <laughs> player. He's a happy guy, but really this t entire team, they're a lot of fun. But because of the pandemic, it's been hard to get to know them. So we're here to help. Take a look. Me. Myself. My style is different from everybody. I think I can rock literally anything. We got we got a we got a drippy team. Everybody stylish. Everybody has a pretty good swag. Maybe Terrence, um, PJ, maybe, but I think a sleeper is Brennan. I'd probably say BJ because he don't dress for real, but like he got shoes, like he can he got a lot of shoes and stuff, but he just don't dress like he don't throw on jeans or nothing. I never seen him throwing on jeans or nothing, so. Ooh, Lee Stylish, Cam Fletcher. Riley Welsh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Riley. Brennan wears a yellow shoes, so I don't think he's the, anyone to talk. <laughs> I wouldn't say Lee Stylish, like some people have unique styles, like Dante's style is like unique. Put me in some overalls, put me in some like beach type, Islander fit, like I, I feel like I could rock anything, so my style, like I look at people style differently. I'm like, that's style, and some might say that's ugly. I'm gonna have to go with Dante, Dante Allen. Wait, who said I had the least, who said I had the least style? Brennan and KB? I don't wanna reveal my source. Davian and who? <laughs> Movies. Why basketball is the best sport uh, invented ever in the world. <laughs> The spotlight on me, right? So I'm talking about me. I'm letting them know everything about me so they can get to know me. Well, I can definitely talk about meditation and self care. Step Brothers, Friday, Boys in the Hood. This isn't gonna sound real goofy, but I can. I think I can give a 20 minute presentation over Spider Man. I talk about video games. I'm pretty good at video games. Comedy movies and, and, and movies like uh, uh, Menace to Society. How hard work pays off. And mental health, that's that's a big part of me. I, I strive for mental health, like old school movies. Probably going, in, either going into fashion or business. Um, Really, I like to argue, so I'll be honest, I'd love to be a lawyer. If there's an opportunity for me to potentially go into broadcasting or coaching, you know, whatever life may bring, uh, you know, I'm open to all possibilities. Probably becoming a coach. I feel like it would be like to make something that would change the world, but I really don't know what that thing would be. I guess I would put like 10 years aside to make something up. Very. The dollar bill has to come in my shoe every time I play. Say if I get my uncle broke, damn, we got a big game tomorrow. I won't wear those shoes. I keep the same $5 bill in my sock the whole season. It'll get yucky by the end of the year, but oh well. 
My superstition is to not be superstitious. In high school, I used to uh, have to eat a Snickers before every game. But I haven't really played in the game now, so like, I guess I'm gonna have to find out what superstition it is like five games in, so I'll, I'll keep you updated. Probably that I just eat like junk food when I'm not supposed to. I love watching TikToks, I ain't gonna lie. I like play NBA 2K, <laughs> like all the time. And some people might be like, it's an addiction, but I still get in the gym. <laughs> I like gummy bears. I know it's not good for me. I shouldn't eat it that much, but if you put a bag in front of me, I'm going to kill it. Probably just buying shoes, like collecting shoes. I mean, this isn't like weird, I guess, but I mean, I love animals. Like, I had a pet lizard. Nah, not really. Everything I do, I, I, I own it. <laughs> if you guys don't already know, I played Caribbean pan when I was younger, and um, it's kind of a different instrument, but you know, as a young kid and being from the Caribbean, it was something that I tried and I was pretty good at it. I'm really big into the Marvel superhero movies. You would think I'm quiet, but like in all reality, like I'm very talkative. I'm kind of like shy when I get around other people that I don't really know. Now he messaged me and he was just like... So Drake slid in your DMs? Yeah. He was, just, he was just saying I, I was nice at basketball. You know, I listen to music 24 hours out of the day. I like to meditate a lot when I wake up, go to sleep. I'm a kid, just like any other 18, 19 year old. Like, I love the game, I love the game of basketball, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm a kid who likes to have fun. Um, I play video games, I do all those type, um, sorts of things, just like their kids um, would be doing. So I think that's one thing that they, uh, they should know. I want to get to know them just as much as they want to get to know me. I want to have fun. Uh, we're going to win some games, and uh, it's going to be exciting. I play with a lot of passion, and uh, I'm just super excited. I really don't have any words. So I'm just ready to hoop. I Keith, mean, I, I love you, everything about it. How that. can you not like this team, right? Love I mean, everything I mean, about it. Up next on our 2020 After the Madness special, we'll hear from Jimmy Dykes of the SEC Network. He'll share his observations on Kentucky basketball's pro day from last week. Stick around. Love getting prices that are lower than low on food that's fresher than fresh? With the Kroger app, you can get personalized coupons on top of weekly sales and rewards like fuel points, all for prices that are lower than the everyday low. So go ahead, get lower than low. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Today tastes like staying in. Like our go-to place. <laughs> Tastes like anticipating. Honey, could you help me with this? And a little bit like waiting. Food's here. Today tastes like a piece of the action. And it never tasted this good. You're watching Build Different. BBN Game Day after the Madness 2020, presented by Papa John's. Welcome back to this special edition of BBN Game Day. Kentucky basketball went before a national TV audience for a pro day on the SEC Network last week. Mary Jo talked to one of the hosts of the broadcast, Jimmy Dykes, about his impressions of this year's Cats. Thank you for joining us today, Jimmy Dykes. We appreciate it so much. You got to see a firsthand, up close look at this Kentucky basketball team. Overall first impressions. Well, it's a typical John Calipari team in terms of they are crazy talented and crazy young and uh, crazy long. And that's kind of the, the, the big impression I got after watching them practice live uh, a couple of times. I'm now watching them, I think, three times on film as well. Um, but there's a lot of pieces there to work with. Uh, they look more like a veteran team when you watch them execute right now than uh, you would expect. Uh, but just because they're, they're so young, they've had limited time together, uh, I think he has them tracking right now at a pretty good pace. So the, the addition of Olivier Saar and uh, Davion Mintz, a kid from Creighton, those two guys now, that helps Kentucky become a special team. They were going to be good anyways, but those two older kids, I think, are, are really key people. 
That's what I was going to ask with Olivier and Davion and even Jacob Toppin, who has a little time under his belt. Is that what maybe helps this team become a more cohesive unit quickly because of their experience? Uh, I think Olivier Saar is kind of growing into his voice in terms of what it should sound like as a Kentucky Wildcat. You know, he had a voice at Wake Forest, but now the role, the voice, everything's changed. And I, th I think Mintz is a really good leader. You know, he's a stable, older combo guard. He can play the point, can shoot the ball. Uh, he, he just looks like an older player on the floor. And that's a real plus for them right now. So as talented as, as Boston and Clark and Askew and Isaiah Jackson, as talented as those guys are, you know, they're, they're 18 years old. This is going to be a completely different deal for them. When in Memorial Coliseum, you look up and you see – NBA scouts from Pat Riley to, to, to all the NBA teams represented. Uh, that's an unusual deal, but Kentucky's an unusual program, and Cal says it all the time. It's You have to be built different. It's not for everybody, and I think those kids handled their first time being on the big stage really well. We've talked a lot about B.J. Boston. Tell me what your thoughts are on him. He looks like he could be everything we anticipate. Yeah, he has a great personality, first of all. I, I think he's, he's a very engaging kid. Um, he has a purpose and a plan to his life and how he wants to, you know, he'll, he's not afraid to tell you he wants to be the greatest player to ever play the game. I, I, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but he knows what he's after. You know, a lot of kids his age wake up, they have no plan. They just wake up and, and go with the wind of the day. But he's, uh, you know, he's very thin. Uh, so far, he's handled contact pretty well with such a thin body, but he is wired to score. He's just got a knack to get the ball in the basket. You forget that he's 6'7 when you watch him play because he's got a really good handle. He's got a nice jump shot. Uh, he can finish around the rim. Uh, so he, he has a chance to be special, you know, and it's, uh, it's going to be a year, though, where he has to grow, I think, into the alpha dog role pretty quickly. You know, I feel confident what Cal is going to get out of Sar and Mintz. He needs that third guy, and I think Boston right now is that third guy that hey, every night – Coach, I, I, I'm, I'm coming with a dog-eat-dog -dog mentality. If he gets that quickly, that really helps Kentucky. And finally, Jimmy, I have to ask you, having covered this league for so long and coached in it, shocking news from Matthew Mitchell, uh, suddenly retiring from coaching, resigning from UK, and Kyra Elzey stepping in, at least as an interim role. Um, yeah. Talk about your, your thoughts on that. I was really taken back, you know, and he, Matthew's a guy that, man, he's – He's so likable. You guys know that there in Lexington. He's so engaging and so much passion for his kids and the job. And he did so much to build that program up to a, a top 20 job really year in and year out. You know, he's one of the coaches when I was at Arkansas. I, I, could, I, I never beat Kentucky, beat, beat, beat Tennessee, beat Texas A&M, beat a lot of good programs. We just never could beat Kentucky. And the way, the way his kids played, they always played hard. Uh, they, they, they played a fast pace, which is hard to handle. He's a great recruiter. Uh, so, you know, I just kind of reading some of the things he said, you know, I, that had to be a very, very hard decision. Uh, but I think he has kind of stepped back and been forced to step back uh, to kind of see the bigger picture of life. And I know he talked about his family and his faith and how that has really opened his eyes up uh, in, in, a, in a different way. So um, I hope I get to have some – contact with him here the next week or so before I come back to Lexington uh, because he, he's a he's one of the true real gentlemen uh, in, in women's basketball like he reached out to me quickly when I got hired at Arkansas was always kind to me uh, and he will really be missed I know Kentucky's got a good team this year but you lose your head coach like that it'll, it'll take them a little bit to find their feet again uh, and I hope they have a great year because that those, those young ladies um, and I know he's got a really good team that, that he passed along. Jimmy Dykes, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate your insight. We're looking forward to your call of Big Blue Madness. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Great job, guys. Well, Coach Cal is one of the most charismatic coaches in all of college basketball. Yeah, that isn't lost on his newest group of players who offered us their impressions of the boss man. Do you have a good Cal impersonation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say he just he just talks very loud. When people dribble a lot, he'll say, I got to pick up the tennis ball. There he goes, dribbling a lot to pick up the tennis ball. That's what he says a lot. Uh, uh, we're we're going to lose a game because you, you want to reach for the ball with one hand? We're, we're going to lose a game because of that? 
No, we're not. Grab the ball with two hands, chin it, and let's run up the floor. Well, he's gonna pick up the tennis ball, he's gonna he's gonna kick the volleyball, and then he's gonna step back into a <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> habits. We gotta we got new habits we gotta make and we got bad habits we gotta break. We're gonna lose a game because you wanna go after the ball with one hand. And like he'll always be like making all these hand movements and stuff like it's pretty funny. That's all he says, habits every day. For me specifically, like I can hear him in the back of my head right now like, saying like stop playing with the ball, go. Tyrese just, you know, shoots it and then he goes back on defense. <laughs> That's right, he gave that to Tyrese a lot last year. Everything we do in practice is just have basically just habits and stuff and uh, he wants us to turn those habits into like a regular thing so it's like just natural. When he just explains stuff, he's like, whoa! And during practice, he started just making noises, and he's so animated. <laughs> it's funny. He'd be like, why is he doing that, talking to the team? And he'd be like, it's easier. <laughs> he'd be like, it's easier. So that's a, it's a big thing for him. You'll hear it at least 15 times in practice. We've heard a lot about, like, tennis balls. <laughs> yeah. He says, yeah, he says, he's like, yeah, like, you want to go by the guy, you don't want to just pick the tennis ball, just put on the cone and just dribble around and all that. You just want to, no, yeah, he does that a lot. He, he got to come up with a new joke. Me and Tony Byron have been talking about it, but it's funny. We, we love it. Too cute, too cute. Well, still ahead on this special edition of BBN Game Day, it's time to talk about some UK women's team. Yeah, we're going to run through the schedule and hear from new interim head coach Kyra Elsie when we return. At UK Healthcare, we're dedicated to one mission, helping Kentucky get healthier. It's what drives our research, our outreach, our expert care. It's why we come to work every day and why Kentuckians come to us when it matters most. And it's why we've been ranked Kentucky's number one hospital for the fifth year in a row with one of the top cancer centers in the nation. The best in Kentucky, the best for Kentucky. UK Healthcare, the power of advanced medicine. Kentucky Farm Bureau has been insuring folks for more than 75 years. So, we know Kentucky. Case in point, we know the happy birthday song was written by a pair of Kentucky sisters. The whole song lasts only about 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, good thing. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. Big on commitment. You're watching Build Different. BBN Game Day after the Madness 2020, presented by Papa John's. Welcome back to this special edition of BBN Game Day. For this segment, we turn our attention to Kentucky women's basketball. Here's a look at the schedule for the Cats this season, and it's been a wild start to the season already, as we'll talk a little bit more about Matthew Mitchell um, departing and retiring and a new head coach there. But with the non-conference portion of the schedule here, they're going to open up with Murray State and Belmont at home. They've got a nice one at Kansas State, um, but they had December 6th and December 22nd are dates that are to be determined, Keith, simply because they are still trying trying to finalize a couple of things noticeably absent from that non-conference schedule though is Louisville. Yeah, I mean, one of those things, you know, is just that we're in that COVID season where it was probably hard enough to get the schedule that they've got. And so now here, like you said, they've got a, a couple of those to be determined. Of course, they'll have Marshall and Sanford at home in December before going on the road to see the Dwayne PV DePaul <laughs> Demon Deacons. There you go. And uh, then they'll return home to face Wofford before they start off that SEC schedule the last day of December against Arkansas. Five teams in the SEC are ranked in the top 25 on this schedule for Kentucky. There are eight teams that are either ranked or are receiving votes. So make no mistake, this is still a very tough schedule that the Cats are working here. But to your point, they're going to open it up with number 14, Arkansas. And then they've got South Carolina, who is their permanent SEC opponent, is always 
always on their schedule twice. So that's the top ranked team in all the land and the top ranked team in the SEC picked to win it all. That's going to be a tough battle. But I will tell you that this is a team that has enough talent to be able to make some noise and make a run here in this SEC portion of the schedule. I, I thought it was interesting too the fact that they are the second pick uh, behind only South Carolina to win the league. And, and, and why not when you got a player like Ryan Howard? Yeah, this is a deep and athletic team. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But they, these, uh, this is a team that could definitely make some noise and make a run here. All right, 2020 has been hard on everyone, but for Coach Matthew Mitchell, he faced an even bigger challenge following off-season brain surgery. So much so that he decided to step away last week. And I want to say this, though, about him. He is, his health is fine. He is doing well uh, as far as his health goes, but it was an untimely retirement. That leaves assistant Kyra Elsie to take over the program just before the season starts. Mary Jo talked to Coach Elsie about the big shoes she has to fill. This piece is brought to you by Papa John's Pizza. So it has been a crazy week. Have you had a minute to kind of just <sighs> catch your breath? It has been a crazy week. I have not caught my breath yet, but it's been amazing. Uh, so much support from the coaches around the department, um, from fans, friends, family. Uh, so it's been amazing in that aspect. Um, I did have that oh wow moment um, after the press conference I was staying in, standing in practice and I was like oh wow like it really started to sink in uh, at that moment. It's been such a quick transition all the pieces moving so quickly. Have you had a chance to think about what kind of stamp you want to put on this team this season that says Kyra Elsie? You know I mentioned before, Coach and I were so aligned in our coaching philosophy um, as far as um, how we want to play. Um, so I think we will stand with that up-tempo, aggressive defensively. Um, I do like that we're scoring inside more. So if I put any stamp on it, playing inside out and not relying so much on the outside shot. Um, but we still want to get it off the glass, go and be versatile in how we score. We know that you have just a killer team this year. I mean, maybe the best in the history of Kentucky women's basketball. You probably have to go back to like Valerie Still, Patty Joe Hedges kind of days uh, when you're talking about that. But I want to jump forward to next year. Can you talk a little bit about Jada? You know, Jada Walker, we are so excited that she's a Wildcat. Uh, she fits our style. Uh, she is a coach's kid. She has a high basketball IQ. Uh, she's a crafty scorer, but she just plays with an edge, um, and she's an unbelievable leader on the floor. So she will be a great addition to what we already have. So this summer, as you were kind of taking over the reins, uh, when did you kind of get the sense that this might be happening? You know, I was really trying to hold on hope that, you know, Coach Mitchell would be able to make it back. Uh, we had been in plenty of conversations. He was trying to work his way um, back on the floor. Um, I just never imagined it would happen like this. I Last week, I probably thought, you know, maybe he will take the year off and then he will take the reins back. So this is not how any of us imagined or planned for it. Uh, but we, our motto is how we are going to honor coach is put our best foot forward this year, put a Kentucky team on the floor that competes and that he would be proud of. Finally, you played at Tennessee. We all know that. You even spent some time coaching there in Knoxville. But what does this mean to a Kentucky girl born and bred? I'm truly honored and humbled. Um, you know, my my basketball career started here, a state that has supported me, my hometown of LaGrange, Kentucky, that had poured life into me um, to help me to help make me the woman that I am today. And just to give hope uh, to all the little girls running around Kentucky, the sky is truly the limit. And basketball can take you to places that you have that I never dreamed of. So I want to seize the moment and also give people hope that you can do anything that you put your mind to.
Coach Kyra Elsey, thank you so much for being with us today. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Keith, she's going to do great. That yes. interview is brought to you by Papa John's. Up next on our After the Madness special, a final word from our entire panel. We'll be right back. Or meat bounces. Get any papadilla like the new double cheeseburger papadilla for just six bucks. Papa John's. With roots dating back to 1946, Central Bank remains a community bank dedicated to serving the people and businesses of Kentucky. We're here, as always, with customer service and support, as well as online and mobile banking services available 24 hours a day. For the latest information about your options for banking services and resources, visit us at centralbank.com. Central Bank, central to you. Member FDIC. If you thought you saw the last of double cheeseburger pizza, think again, because it's back at Papa John's again. Get a large double cheeseburger pizza for just 12 bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. You're watching Build Different, BBN Game Day after the Madness 2020, presented by Papa John's. Let's wrap up this special edition of VBN Game Day by checking back in with our whole panel. Keith, let's start with you. Final thoughts on the upcoming season? I I'm real excited about this team. I really am because I think the depth from those transfers are what puts this team over the top. I think this is a Final Four team. I really do. Let's go uh, now and check in with Christy. I just hope basketball season happens. <laughs> Jack, your thoughts? <laughs> well, I, I'm always excited about the start of basketball season. I'm really excited always about Calipari coached teams. This team's going to have a team full of athletes. I'm looking forward to some fast break basketball. Well, I, I think that this team come February is going to be a legitimate Final Four contender. And I think Saar and Mintz are the two guys that are going to help this young team get through the first couple months. And if they can drive this team by leadership and play, this team come whenever we have March Madness. <laughs> it may be May Madness, but they're going to help get that team there. All right, guys, appreciate it. Thanks for joining us for this special hour of BBN Game Day. Tune in every Saturday for our regular edition of the show. Until then, go Big Blue. Built different. BBN Game Day after the Madness 2020. Presented by Papa John's. And sponsored by Central Bank. Coca-Cola. Don Franklin Auto. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. Kroger. Shelter Insurance. And UK Healthcare.